This is a book review of X-Men 137. No, it's not. It's X-Men, uncanny X-Men, Omnibus. The Phoenix Must Die. Yeah, it's the, there. And it's obviously by Claremont, Byrne and Cockrum. And of course, Terry Austin and many others contributed to this massive volume. It's about 860 odd pages in total. It's got some great extras at the back. And I'm just going to throw it. Now, this is the second print. It just come out, 2020. And it was printed in China. I think the first volume, first version was as also. So uh, what does it collect? X-Men 132 to 141, Annuals 45, Uncanny X-Men, they changed the title slightly, 142 to 153, Avengers Annual 10, Marvel Fanfare 1 to 4, Marvel Treasury uh, 1974, 26 to 27, Marvel Team Up 100, Bizarre Adventures 27, and Phoenix the Untold Story 1. Now, a lot of people can be complaining or having problems with the binding spine there. Personally, I can't see an issue. Now, I'm not going to be really go over this because personally, when I look at this, it looks fine to me. I've got no, got no pages coming away. It opens really nice. It's not collapsing in on itself. The gutter, I can see both sides of the story, pages. So... Uh, I think it's absolutely fine, and my apologies for the rain outside. It is really bad day outside. So you've got this book, I'm just going to open about the middle, and it's absolutely fine. Now, of course, lots of people worry about the eye and things, and I, I can understand that. But personally, it's never worried me, as long as it's not falling to pieces, as far as I'm concerned. Pages dropping out, or whatever. If it's got a slight, well... It's never going to probably be as good as like a 16th century book where it was done with super duper care and binding. Now, I think this is absolutely fine for me, but other people might come to this and say, oh, I don't like it. I mean, I've seen some videos where they were saying about like the uh, the way that the, the distance thing. And it's uh, obviously, if you are concerned about these things, of course, it's a thing. You've spent a lot of money on these books and you want it to be perfect and perfectly reasonable to think that. But I have to say, it doesn't worry me. Quality of the colour. I could just hear it then, just as I was opening it, just that page, I could hear a slight sort of virtually, just quite a few pages that all seem to be slightly stuck together. But they're not sort of stuck together really physically. That would be annoying because I quite often you have to get careful with the knife and something that's Horrible, really damages the book, and I don't just upsets me when I've spent a reasonable amount on it. However, let's go through the book itself after a bit of a there is, like I say, an issue with this book. Obviously, people on the web have been talking about this. It's got a lot of contents, I really love it. One before I go any further, there is one slight issue because I haven't gone for the omnibus volume one. There is a slight gap in my stories, but luckily I've got the original comic, so I haven't got thing. But the epic collections, I think, are slightly misaligned in the numbering. It's like uh, the ep one of the epics finishes. So if you want all the stories, you're going to have to buy the upcoming epic collection. So uh, just to fit that gap, I think it's about three issues. Always the way. So you've got these, and then you've got, got the good old introduction. Now, I always wish... With these, I wish Marvel would make a proper, 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 like they did with like the uh, Conan ones, a proper introduction where it's up to date, 2020. You know, you've gone, all they do is quite often is put the uh, Marvel Masterworks one, 2004. Why not proper introduction? It'd be really good if they did that. You know, with a real detailed analysis of the stories. Of course, maybe something you wouldn't want to read initially, but I think it. You know, for the whole of all these stories, it's quite good to get all the background details, all the, what happened, what was what was going on, the production, the reasons why, everything about it would be nice at the book. When you're spending, let's say, a reasonable amount of money on an 800-odd page book, spare a little introduction, I think, is always good. But, of course, you've got this, this one. And you've got the first one here, the X-Men 132. And the artwork, restoration, is absolutely superb. I think it's just... First rate, first rate all the way through. I mean, this is so much better than reading, reading the original comics. I mean, I've 
bought all of the comics at this point. I'm, every single one is. I haven't got them all now. I wish I had. Maybe I wouldn't have bought the omnibus if I'd got all of the issues. But I've got a fair number. I've still kept like the 135, 136, 137, and all those sort of, even the up to 143. Of course, you've got the Hellfire Club. You've got that story. And I just love this story. Just really, at the time, Terry Austin and John Byrne. Oh, and that's one thing I suppose I should always quickly do. It's always one thing I like to show. Um, all the various people involved. You've got all the pencilers, inkers, letterers, etc. Anything that's missing there. Colours, I was just going to say. It's over on the other page. Just looking, I noticed from one angle, I was thinking, that's strange. I'm, going, I'm always thinking that one of the key things, the colour in this. If you're going to get a book, obviously, that's in colour, it's nice to actually have the listing of colourists. And letterers is always important because you want to read it. And you've got, of course, the brilliant Phoenix story. I loved the Phoenix story. Phoenix story is classic, classic story. Jean Grey. And there's some more. Now, I'm not certain which one this one is, and I'm just going to... Oh, yes, that's Mora. I won't show that one. You've got this. This story is quite an unusual one. I'm just going to choose one. Don't want to show you too much of it. It's obviously don't want to spoil the book, because I think it's a... Really, this was just a superb run of stories, especially for me, the early ones, of course, John Byrne. But to be honest, when you actually go through it, there's not all of it is John Byrne. Obviously, quite a few pages at the start, but then, of course, he left. And oh, you have got a few. There's one. You can see, obviously, with this, there is a bit of gutter loss, but there's not that many of these double page spreads or splashes, or whatever you want to call them. Personally, it's, and I never worry too much. Obviously, if there's quite often, if there's a word balloon in the middle, it's quite annoying. You've suddenly got text would be cut off. But when you can see, I can see that's Nightcrawler. I do not need to worry about that, that these slightly cut in the center. Maybe. It's, Transporting at that point of the story. I love that one. Wendigo there. And of course the classic, uh, brilliant Days of Future Past. Absolute superb, superb story. Love that. Real classic. Also, I love the Christmas one that was, uh, Christmas Eve one, I should say, that was next. Love that story. Then you've got Murder World. Love that one. With old Doc Doom. So you've got Doc Doom. Of course the covers. And the... Now one thing, of course, that is slight... And say they didn't don't know if they continued all the way through sometimes later of course these things sort of disappeared the letters pages i can't see letters pages everywhere oh there's a letters page there i love letters pages letters pages are just brilliant because you just read what people were thinking at the time and also i love the mighty marvel checklist so you've always got the checklist and this one's got marvel magazine so there's still some magazine epic i would love to see an omnibus edition of that be brilliant. Also, the Hulk one would be nice as well. You've got Murder World there, continuing, and then you've got the Dazzler and Spider Woman. I'm surprised they haven't bought an omnibus edition out of Dazzler yet. Or Spider Woman. Again, lacking in epic collections and those characters. So you've got all the stories. Oh, one of my favourite all time. Loved, loved this one. This is the Avengers Annual. King size annual. Never said they really knew what they were calling this. One time it's an annual, then it's king size, then it's a giant size, whatever. I, but this one is just, I love the artwork. Michael Golden's brilliant artwork. And the restoration of the artwork in this is just makes the story jump off the page. I just, this is the best way over it. Now I've got this obviously in many, I've seen it for quite a few issues over the years. So, uh, Great story, like all the same, just classic. Oh, we've got the Badoon there. Oh, Fantastic Four turning up in one of the stories. Armageddon. Now, the artwork changes. Now, I, I have to say, I wasn't so enamoured by all of the artwork by this point. Uh, this one, of course, is brilliant. Michael Golden again. But not, yeah, some of it at this point. Let's see. I don't even know who the artist is at this point. Not going to say because I'm not very good at identifying artists or remembering every single artist from every edition. Now this one is uh, Jim Sherman, Bob McLeod, and Joe Joseph Rubenstein. I remember at the time I wasn't so didn't enjoy their artwork as much. 
I suppose I was just sport because John Burns' artwork was so, to me, just one of the greats. I love John, but especially Terry Austin's inking. I'm not mega fan of every bit that John Byrne does because sometimes he's got other inkers or inks and, and it's just not so good. Terry Austin, I loved that. Then you got all the way through. Now this is a bit of, uh, now this, the Avenging Angel. This is weird. This is Marvel Treasury Edition 1980. How odd. Seems slightly out of place, but anyway, you've got the uh, Avenging Angel. Not certain why that's stuck there. Anyway, Storm and the Black Panther. So you've got some of these are Marvel team up. So you've got a few solo adventure stories. And then you've got this classic one, Bizarre Adventures. Now, I haven't got the original of this. So I don't know if the scale in this book. Sometimes with these, it's slightly often smaller. I'm certain people will turn around and say, it's slightly smaller, slightly bigger. But so you've got the Phoenix story. And I loved that issue. I regret getting rid of quite a few comics over the years. That was one I regret getting rid of, because of course now it's probably immensely collectible. You've got the Iceman story as well after that. And also this one, uh, Show Me the Way to Go Home. That was a really good story. I just loved the artwork. These pencil drawings are always sort of brilliant black and white. Magazines are always my favourites. Then weirdly go on to, and you've got the the untold story. That was amazing. I, and then loved that issue. But I've got the 137. I didn't sadly keep the untold story on. I wish I'd done that. And that had a really good sort of uh, article and, uh, at the back as well. And then you've got some bonus material. You've got some uh, character designs. You've got some, of course, original inked pages. Always cover original art there. And then you've got the cover original art for 137. You've also got uh, oh, a brilliant one. This one's a Phoenix Plate from uh, World's Finest Comics. And you've also got some John Byrne pencils and the Dark Phoenix Saga. Uh, obviously, they brought that out as a trade paperback. So you've got that volume there. And then that's it. But just run through it. Like I say, again, I really, the glue, everything, I've seen worse. I have seen a lot worse than this. Some of these, uh, so I've had volume where you can really see, and I think, oh, you know, will that fall apart at a later point? But this, well, looks fine. Looks absolutely fine. You can see there. Now, I know people will say certain things about it. But, and then, of course, you've got all the back. I love those. I, I'd be disappointing if Marvel ever changed I think it's great that they include, obviously, I don't know if all the covers are included. No idea. I suspect there must be a few missing there. I can't say. Can't see any caps there, but anyway, there might be a few gaps. But it's always great when they include that. And I and I really love this sort of large selection of stuff, material, that's been included. You know, it would be really boring if it had been just X-Men all the way through to issue you know, whatever, 158 or 59 or something, and none of this other stuff have been included. I always think the slight bits, deviations off the story, just to include, especially like Bizarre Adventures, just really great they've included that. And the Marvel team-ups as well. Just love it. Great volume. Absolutely superb stories. I think, you know, a good 70 to 80% of this, I think it's classic, classic X-Men. I wouldn't say every story in this, Gems, there's some stories that I remember at the time, and even now, I would I just go, not really interested. Some of the, the art, the story, just didn't do any, it was a bit confusing, or it just, I didn't warm to it. But there's so many great stories in this, and I'm really, really glad I bought this on the position. So, uh, oh, superb, totally, totally recommended.